Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain and derive the equation of radar range. In the previous video I have explained how to determine the range to the target using the standard notation like distance is equal to velocity into time. So using this standard notation like distance is equal to velocity into time using this standard notation we have calculated the total electromagnetic signal travels the distance between the radar system and the target is 2 or that is equal to c into c is nothing but velocity of the electromagnetic signal into time taken by the electromagnetic signal to go onto the target and again reflected back towards the radar system so this is the total equation from this we have derived r is equal to ctr by 2 in this we have noted included any of the parameters like transmitter, receiver, antenna and object. So these four different devices parameters are not yet included in this radar range equation in this radar range to the target. So it is not generally considered always. Okay, so if we include the radar range equation in such a way that the parameters of transmitter, receiver, antenna and object then the entire radar range equation can be determined. Okay, so in this video I am going to explain a radar range equation where all the parameters of this transmitter, receiver, antenna and object, uh, object parameters are going to be included so we are going to derive a complete radar range equation this radar range equation is very 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 important from examination point of view so let us consider a radar system let us consider a radar system with an antenna like this the distance from this antenna to this object this is the object located at a distance of r like what we have considered in the previous case. Now, the power density, listen carefully, it is very simple but very important. The power density, power density radiated or you can also say originated from transmitter is pt power density power per unit area so how can we write the units watts per meter square units of this power density pt is watts per meter square so we can also say this pt as the transmitter power okay in the radar system we have a transmitter receiver and uh, antenna in this the transmitter is a device which is used to originate the power which is having the power of pt so power density power per unit area so power per unit area nothing but watt per meter square now in general to identify any object which is located in the environment the radar system may use an isotropic antenna so i the power density the power density radiated by an isotropic antenna isotropic antenna is power density radiated by isotropic antenna at a distance r pt by 4 pi r square at a distance r okay so the power density radiated by isotropic antenna why we have taken isotropic antenna we have several antennas with us isotropic antenna parabolic antenna dipole antenna and several antennas are there horn antenna you know among all these antennas why we have considered only isotropic antenna means isotropic antenna is an antenna which radiates power uniformly in all directions isotropic antenna is nothing but it is an antenna which radiates power uniformly in all directions 
so uniformly in all directions so it's nothing but the power radiated in a spherical shape power radiated in a spherical shape but how much distance they, that it can transmit the power at a distance r so as the power is delivering at a distance r with a, a spherical shape so power density now it is pt by 4 pi r square pt is nothing but the transmitter power and 4 pi r square is a perimeter of that sphere now but how long we can consider the isotropic antenna whether the consideration of isotropic antenna is true always or not it is not true because the target may be located at only one distance at only in one particular direction suppose we know that the target is coming from the direction of west or north or south or any east okay if we know the direction in a particular direction of the object then it is always waste to use the isotropic antenna because isotropic antenna radiates power uniformly in all directions so once if we know the target is located in only at particular distance it is waste to use the power in deliver in all the directions so what we can do that instead of isotropic antenna in such a case we can use a parabolic antenna so instead of instead of isotropic antenna it is better to use parabolic antenna parabolic antenna or we can also call it as a directive antenna which radiates power in only one direction suppose see here the here we are using parabolic plate just in uh, before the speed so the power radiated only in this direction so the wavefront will be converted now into only uh, sends the signal only in this direction so uh, the power density radiated by this uh, parabolic antenna can be written as so now we need to write what is the amount of power density because of this antenna if, at each and every place we need to write the power density so the power density the power density radiated by parabolic antenna or directive antenna in only one direction so that is equal to pt by 4 pi r square into another parameter that is being added to this one is g g is nothing but gain of this parabolic antenna okay whatever the parameters we are adding that all comes into multiplication okay so pt into g by 4 pi r square that is the amount of power radiated into the free space so the transmitter inside this radar systems we have a transmitter and receiver here we have pt so the power pt is being transmitted into the free space like pt g by 4 pi r square pt g by 4 pi r square now this power goes goes and touches this object and again reflected back okay let us consider the object is also a spherical object because the spherical shape is the shape where it is a uniform object shape because when the power touches this uh, spherical shape the power will be reflected into all directions that means the power density the power density will be scattered in many directions the electromagnetic signal can be scattered in many directions so it goes in this direction it goes in this direction in this direction in this direction so like that in all the directions the power is being reflected among these only one uh, small amount of power only reflected back towards the radar system that will be collected and processed that is a different thing so what is the amount of power that is going here onto this object ptg by 4 pi r square it is pt ptg by 4 pi r square and uh, the out this power is going to touch this object the sub object will be reflecting the signal back so as we are taking the uh, spherical object uh, we are taking the object in the spherical shape at a distance r so we need to write this as the power density the power density re-radiated back 
re-radiated back to the radar system. So that we can write it as PTEG by 4 pi r square. This is the amount of power that is going on to the target. And when the target touches this, the, touches this amount of power and reflected back, the object parameters will be added sigma by 4 pi r square. As the object is a spherical object, we have taken the spherical power density area. What is this sigma? Sigma is nothing but cross sectional area of the target where, where sigma is nothing but cross sectional area. Cross sectional area of the target. So, cross sectional area of the target at a distance r with a spherical shape, that's why it is uh, phi sigma by 4 pi r square. So, what is the total amount of power density radiated back towards the radar system PTG sigma a, see, PTG sigma by 4 pi r square whole square. Okay, now see here um, in this log diagram, radar system is transmitting a power with high strength. When this power touches this object, what happens? The signal will be reflected back towards the radar system. Okay. So, as the signal is reflected back towards the radar system, uh, how much, suppose this power, this power is coming like this and the some amount of power is coming like this. Among these power signals reflected back towards the radar system, how many signals are, what is the amount of power that is being collected by this radar antenna? So, that depends upon the area. Suppose the signal goes in this direction, it cannot touch the plate. In this direction, it will not touch the plate. Only the uh, signals which are touching the plate only, the, those signals are reflected back towards the feed and collected by the radar system receiver. Okay. So, here the matter of the power that is being collected by this antenna is completely depending on the effective aperture or effective area AE. So, therefore, Therefore, the power received by the radar system is received power PR is equal to PT G sigma AE by 4 pi R square whole square. 4 pi r square whole square. Okay. So, what we need, we are going to calculate the radar range equation R for this one. So, from this, uh, take the R outside. So, PT G sigma AE by 4 pi square PR whole power 1 by 4. This is the received power equation. Uh, this is the radar range equation R is equal to PTG sigma A by 4 pi square PR. Now, the object is located at very far distance. Let us consider a case where the object is located at very far distance. When the object is located at very far distance instead of this R, then what happens? R becomes R max. R becomes R max because the object is located at far distance. So, the range can be written in, as, in terms of R max. If the distance is very high, what about the power reflected back towards the radar system? It is also very minimum, less power. So, the received power becomes minimum power and max, uh, power distance becomes maximum range. So, if received power becomes Yes, minimum. Yes, minimum. How, uh, how, what we can say this as minimum detectable, minimum detectable signal. Yes, mean. So, it is the least amount of power signal that is going, that can be collected by the receiver, radar receiver. So, PR, if PR becomes yes, mean, then R becomes R max. So, how we can write R max is equal to PT G sigma AE by 4 pi whole square S yes, min whole power 
1 by 4. So, this is the final radar range equation. Final radar range equation R max is equal to Pt G sigma A e by 4 pi square yes mean. Okay. Now, if you suppose in doing problems, when you are doing problems, the values of gain, uh, power, power transmitter power, uh, uh, cross section area of the target and minimum detectable signal, all these values can be given. But in between these G and A, only one value will be given and other value is not given. Then how can you do that? How can you do that? So, what is, let us see what is what individually here. What is what here? See, R max is nothing but, here it is, R max is nothing but, the distance between the radar system and the target which is very maximum very high and yes minimum, yes minimum is nothing but a minimum detectable signal that is the least amount of power that can be received by the radar system pt is nothing but transmitter power gt is g or gt we can also write it as gt sometimes g is nothing but gain of antenna sigma is nothing but cross section area of the target and a is nothing but effect to area or effect, effect to aperture area of the antenna. Now, these two parameters gain and effect to area, these two parameters are belonging to the antenna reflector, antenna plate. <coughs> so, here we can write this relation between the gain and effect to aperture as g is equal to 4 pi a e by lambda square. 4 pi a e by lambda square. Okay. So, if g is known, so that you can calculate a e using lambda. So, how we can write lambda is equal to c by f. Lambda is equal to c by f. So, a frequency of operation is given and c we already know 3 into 10 power of 8 meters per second. Then we can calculate a sigma. If sigma is known and if a e is unknown, we can calculate g. If G is unknown, we can calculate AE. So, one is depending on other parameter. So, depending on this G is equal to 4 pi A by lambda square, in exams, either G or A value will be given, remaining we can simply substitute. Okay. Suppose if the entire equation is written in terms of, in terms of gain G, Pt can, uh, R max can be written as R max is equal to Pt G square lambda square sigma by 4 pi whole cube yes mean whole power 1 by 4. This is in terms of G. And similarly, we can also write the same equation in terms of AE effective area ae that means what we need to do this uh, 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 this entire equation we need to substitute in terms of g so that the equation will be converted into aes so r max is equal to pt ae square sigma by 4 pi lambda square yes mean this is the equation whole power 1 by 4. Okay, just we have not done anything. We have substituted the gain and the aperture formulas in one and each so that we can calculate the entire equation in terms of G or in terms of A. <coughs> if G is given, then you can use this formula. If A is given, then you can use this formula. Yes, G is not there. And you get here in this, A is not, A is not there. Okay, this is the maximum radar range equation which is very, very important. Thank you.